Namaste. Welcome to Zoom Yoga number 30. So if you lie down in Shavasana, and I'll read out the opening quote. So apparently you're only ever one yoga posture away from a better mood. So we shall try it. But first you need the awareness to figure out what your mood is. So as you're lying down in Shavasana with your floppy feet, with your palms facing upward, slightly away from the torso, shoulders are relaxed. Your chin isn't painting the ceiling. You've released your lower back by gently compressing it against the ground, that natural curve, that natural lordosis. Take an inventory of how you're feeling. What is your mood? An answer is for you. The questions are for you. How are you feeling? And with this awareness, this is what you take into the class. And then after the class, you can assess what has changed, if anything. You're only ever one yoga posture away from a better mood. Allowing the body to breathe naturally. Soften and surrender your body weight onto the ground. So we're gonna to start today with leg lifts. So you can have the hands down the side of the body, palms down, or you can put the hands behind your head depending if you want that added stretch on the shoulders. So we're just going to start by raising the right leg and we're going to raise it in thirds. We keep it straight, it doesn't matter how far you lift it, but keep it straight. So we shall inhale as we raise the right leg one third. Exhale and hold. Inhale, raise the second third. and then up to the top and hold. Now you can hold for one breath, two, three, five, whatever you wish. Breathe slowly and deeply and just allow that straight leg to relax into the position. And then when you feel that you've had enough, you gently lower it a third at a time. Keeping it straight. And just alternate the legs at your own pace. Raising the left leg a third at a time. Inhale, raise a third. Exhale, wait. Again, you can adapt this according to your own needs. You can stay in each third for as many breaths as you wish. I like to raise it up to the top and relax here for a few breaths. Try to keep the legs straight and don't be caught up with getting it as high as you can. You raise it to the first point of resistance and you relax and breathe. Try and relax the rest of the body as well. And remember, as always, as you enter a posture, you're trying to enter with class. And as you leave it, you leave with class. So you don't go throwing the leg back on the ground. Remember and keep enough breath and energy.
energy to lower it gently down in thirds. So don't wait until the leg is shaking and uncomfortable and aching. Keep the awareness on the leg that's straight and flat on the ground. Try to relax the muscles in the lower back and the hips and the buttocks. If the hands are behind your head, bring awareness that the elbows are as close to the ground as possible. Even if you did this for 10 minutes, that would be a wonderful start to the day. You can do this lying in bed first thing in the morning. Of course, the benefits aren't quite as great on a soft mattress, but still worth doing. You're breathing slowly and deeply. So one leg lift, one more leg lift for each leg. Or if you've had enough already, you wait and breathe deeply. This is more strenuous than it looks. You have to be careful you don't strain the groin. Now we're going to do leg circles. We start with the right leg, we circle clockwise, then, then the left clockwise, right anti-clockwise, left anti-clockwise. We inhale on the upward movement. So we start with the right as we come up, along and down. Nice and slow. Again, it's up to you, the size of your circle, but don't go large to begin with. Inhale as you come up, exhale down. Two, three, four. Ever feels comfortable. Try to bring your awareness to what's happening in the hip. Nice and slow. So whichever number clockwise on the right and the left and anti-clockwise. And if you have injured any part of the body in the past, you will feel it when you do exercises like this slowly with the breath, if it hasn't properly healed. So you have to be Extra careful with these movements. Get that breath as deep as possible and you're always focusing on that natural pause. And at the risk of repeating myself, the movement is in line with the breath, not the other way around. Allow your feet to flop out, give them a break, give the legs a rest. And if your arms are down at the side, place them behind your head. Just take like a few slow, deep breaths. Imagine the breath coming in from the base of the spine. And as you inhale, see it traveling up the spine, vertebra by vertebra. Filling up those lungs. And then wait for your pause and release. 
and smile as always. Now we're going to do cycling. You can keep your arms, uh, keep your hands at the back of your head if you wish. But if you want a bit more support, you can place your hands back down the side of the body. We're going to do simple cycling in the forward direction. And we're just trying to exaggerate the movement. So we're straightening the legs. If you find that this is a, a ache on the lower back, then you can take the hands slightly in under the buttocks. And that will ease the lower back. So nice and slow, exaggerate the cycling forward direction. And you can feel what it's doing to the abdominals. You can feel what it's doing to the thigh muscles, or I certainly can. And gently reverse. If at any time you feel a strain, you stop and you start to breathe deeply and you start again. Place the feet on the ground, stretch them out. Lie in Shavasana for a few breaths. Palms upwards, slightly away from the body. And get that breath in, that full yogic breath. Inflate the abdomen, expand the rib cage with a puff of air into the clavicle area. Wait for your natural pause. And then soften and surrender the full body weight onto the ground. And we've done three different postures. So has your mood changed? Has it improved? Perhaps it's got worse. How are your spirits? Straighten the legs, bring them parallel. Supta Pava Muktasana, the wind releasing posture. So we slide the right foot along to our seat. We come up, as we inhale, we slide along, exhale as we clasp the knee and gently pull it towards us. And we stay in this position for a few breaths. Tuck the chin in. I won't tuck the chin in completely or I'll be screaming into the microphone. And have a few breaths and just allow, so you're contracting the arms, you're pulling the knee, as close to the torso as you can. You're tucking your chin into the sternum. You're trying to keep your outstretched left leg as straight as possible. And then when you're ready, just release and slide the right leg along. So it's right, both, left. We know this, we've done it many times. Inhale as you bend. Exhale as you clasp the knees and squeeze. Again, hold the position and just start to breathe. Get that chin into the sternum so you're using your thyroid. If you're getting your legs completely flat on your torso, you can slip your arms between your knees and clasp the outside of your feet. That increases the stretch. Any problem, stop the video, have a wee look, and then get back to it. When you feel it's enough, gently release. Stretch out the right leg, stretch out the left leg. Now we bend the left as we inhale. Exhale as we clasp. So this is also working on the abdominal area. Right, both and left is 
working on the gut. Ascending, transverse and descending. So this is why we start in this order. Right, both and left. And just release in your own time. And we'll do one more round. So we inhale as we slide the right foot along. Exhale as we clasp. So this is stretching the back, contracting the arms, you're squeezing the lymph nodes and the groin under the armpit, and you're massaging the abdomen, squeezing the thyroid. This is, again, this is another one you can do first thing in the morning, lying in bed. You don't even have to open your eyes. Nice way to start before you get up. You've already done a bit of work before you put your feet on the floor. Both legs. Slip your hands between your knees if you want a stronger stretch. You can place your elbows on top of the knees, which helps to push them down. release in your own time. And then we finish with the left leg. But of course you can, again, this is another posture you can do for 10, 15, 20 minutes, slowly, rhythmically, breathing deeply. And it's a wonderful, this is called Supta Pavamuktasana, the wind releasing posture. Wind in this occasion is prana, the energy within the body. So you're releasing the blockages so the wind, the energy can flow, flow freely. Within the class environment, it's, it's, it's difficult to show the, the benefits of these postures. You'll only get the benefit once you practice them and, and go into deeper state with them. People would get bored if I stay in this position for 20 minutes. Back into Shavasana, let the body recalibrate. Let it breathe naturally and smile. The reason I say smile, I usually say it after I've involuntarily smiled. Because as the breathing and the postures begin to change how you're feeling, you feel calmer. You feel more content, you feel happier. So we're gonna take the soles of our feet and place them together beside our seat. I'm gonna allow the knees to flop out to the side. And again, we've done this one many times. We're gonna take the thumbs and take them up the center of the body. So we take our palms, we're in our groin, our fingers are pointing down to our feet, our palms are together. We bend at the wrists, just the wrists. And then we inhale as we take the thumb, trace it up the torso, over the face, over the forehead, onto the back of the head. And then you're just going to elongate the body, stretch through, inhale slowly, slowly the first time. You can feel the stretch, the intercostals. You can feel it on your shoulders if you've been sitting all week in an office. You can stay here for two or three breaths with a stretch. And then when you're ready, you release as you stretch the hands out and swoop down. And relax. Join the palms together, fingers pointing down. Check that your feet are comfortable. If you can move them closer to your seat, please do. Allow the knees to flop out. And just start on pace. Bend at the wrists, trying to keep the arms straight. And then you bend at the elbows. As you slowly take the thumbs up over the face, forehead, scalp. And you get them as soon as possible onto the ground behind your head. 
In fact, stay in this elongated position. Stay for a few breaths because it's a wonderful stretch for the rib cage and the shoulder girdle. Inhale and allow, allow the body to release. You're always allowing, you're not forcing. Your face is relaxed. Everywhere else in the body is relaxed. And after your two, three, four breaths, you inhale, you stretch through, and then you sweep the hands around, the back of the hands gently touching the surface of the ground. We'll just continue at this pace. Remember, this is healing for the heart. The heart is at the same level as the rest of the body. You're not using a lot of energy for this posture. So you're building up prana in the body while stretching for minimal effort. You're cleansing the lungs, oxygenating the blood. Come in the nervous system. I keep mentioning the benefits in case you forget them. But of course, you should feel them. So has your mood changed yet? Are you feeling better? Are you feeling worse? This is the only way to figure out which postures work for you. Because they're not all for you. 72,000 postures, supposedly. That's a lot. You only need a few to keep you ticking over. The ones that you can dip into in your toolbox of tricks to get you through the day. Stay with it deepening your practice of the movement and of your awareness. One more after the one that you're on. Get that prana in the body. Get that energy stored up because you're going to need it for the next posture. So take your knees in, your feet are at your seat. And we're just going to do this simple bridge. We're not lifting the legs today. We don't want that. But we're going to lift the arms up. Inhale. As we lift the arms up, place them beside your ears. Three breaths as you inhale and stretch through. So you'll notice it's a different stretch. Inhale, stretch through. That's completely different from the palms together. Three breaths. Three stretches. Try and feel that your feet are parallel and we're going to lift the seat. So we're going to inhale as we lift up. Check that the feet are parallel. Now, as you lift up, if you're not getting a stretch on your thighs, just move your feet a little bit closer. 
towards your now raised seat. And then as you re-engage your lift, you should get a gentle pull in the thighs. So this is all we're looking for. We're inhaling, we're stretching through the fingers. Oh. And gently, not moving up again, just lifting up enough so the gluteals are contracting and the thighs are contracting, but they're also getting a stretch. So a few breaths in this position, I know from experience that I can take my heels in a little bit more. So I take my heels in a little bit more and then you'll find you'll have to lift less to get the same effect. So the gluteals are tight. I'm getting a strong contraction of my thighs and I'm also getting my thighs stretched as I take the heels closer to my seat. So this is all we're looking for. Always check that your feet are still parallel. And be careful because my right shoulder went into a little spasm there because I'd pulled the muscle swimming. So you've always to be careful. So you're not aggressively lifting up. The work is being done by moving the heels closer to your seat. If you think you can move a little bit more, please do. And then you'll find that you barely have to engage your lift at all. It's, everything's already working there. And this is a strong burn up of lactic acid. So don't sit in position too long. You can lower the arms, lower the seat, take a few breaths and come back up if you want to continue the practice. But it's a strong contraction. When you feel you've had enough, you take the arms down at the same time as the seat touches the ground. So you're not just flopping down, you're coming down in an exhalation. You're trying to engage the mind as opposed to just thumping down. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Mm. Then we're going to clasp the knees gently because it's a strong squeeze you've had in the back there of the vertebra. So gently squeeze the knees and bring them towards you. And you'll feel that reverse stretch of the spine. And then release it a little slowly. Mm, and you'll feel that energy going through the areas that, that's been squeezed. And again, exhale as you gently tuck the chin in, pull the knees towards you. And release. Now we're going to clasp the knees together. You can interlock your fingers, find the way that works for you. And we're going to roll side to side. So gently. Have a said gently, just allow the body to move from side to side, keeping the knees together. Now, of course, as always, there's many ways of doing this. You can allow just the head to go in line with the movement or you can rock to the right and turn your head to the left rock to the left turn your head to the right whatever works for you slow it right down if you know you're going to be doing this in future always ensure you have plenty of support under your spine Nice and slow. When you've had enough of that, we rock. Release your clasped fingers and just rock forward and back. And again, get that nice gentle massage in the spine, which activates the nerves. Keeping your chin tucked in. And once you've got the momentum, 
you allow yourself to come right up. So just sit tall. We're going to do sitting twists. But we'll just sit tall with our hands on our knees and let the body recalibrate. Let it breathe naturally. If you want to say a mantra, if, if thoughts are coming and going, if you want to eradicate that, let peace begin with me. Let me begin with peace. Let peace begin with me. Let me begin with peace. So I notice myself, my shoulders are up at my ears, so I let them go. So just go through the various parts of your body, and if you're holding tension, let it go. Try to keep the spine straight. If your back's uncomfortable or tired, you just take your hands on the side, keep the spine straight, but take the weight. Some days you will be tired. Some days you've pushed yourself. That's okay. So now we're going to take the left leg and we're just going to cross it over the right. Now remember with these twists, these simple sitting twists, if you feel your back is strong enough, you can take your right arm and just place it around the back. If you don't think you need the support, you take your left arm. So we're going to turn in the direction around to the right. So we've taken a left leg over the right and we're going to turn to the right. So if you feel you can su support your own back or the muscles are strong enough, and you just keep your right arm around the back. If you want support, then you take your right arm, place it close to your back, and it acts as a post, and it lifts you up as well. So we'll do it this way today. Take the support. So if I turn around to let you see, so I'm taking the left leg over the right, I'm turning around to the right, and if I'm sitting tall without any support, I'm doing this. But if I'm a little bit tired or I've been very active yesterday and I want a bit of help, I'm putting my hand in close and this keeps you upright. So don't feel that you're being defeatist or you're not strong enough. Some days you need a bit of help. And then we turn to the right. Keep your back straight and we just start to breathe. And as you inhale, you sit up straight. And as you exhale, you allow the body to twist to the right. So you don't put the hand away from the back and lean back like this. This is pointless. You put it as close to the back as you, as you can. Keep the body upright. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you twist. These are not for everyone because they can be tiring. I never used to enjoy them because my back wasn't strong enough. So I'll come back around to the front. And what you do from this is, you're still looking around to the right, release your chin first, and release your right arm. And we're gonna go straight into the left. Now there's two ways, as always, there's plenty of ways of doing this. If you're flexible enough, you can take your right arm and put it right around like this, but that's a strong twist. It's very strong, but I prefer to clasp my left knee like so, and it gives a nice stretch on the hip. So take the right arm onto the left knee, and then I go round. I use my arm to support the back on this occasion. I'm inhaling as I'm lifting up through the spine. And exhaling as I twist. And that's not comfortable, so I try again. That's better. Again, if it takes a few efforts, it's okay. You come out, you try again. 
So we've gone from the right twist straight into the left twist with the left leg over the right. And for some reason today, my body feels a little bit tired. So I'm using the support. I'm using the support around the back with a hand in close to the base of the spine. If you need to lean against something, that's also okay as well. When you're ready to come out, you release the chin. Turn back. Straighten. And you know what's coming now. We're taking our right leg. We're crossing it over our left. And we'll go to the opposite side. So we'll go into the side of the, the, the crossed leg first. We're going to the left. Sit up straight. Take your support if you need it or if if you don't, put your left arm around so you can see it peeping around this side. Inhale, exhale as you turn. So twists are meant to squeeze out any blockages, squeeze out any negative emotions. It's like when you wring um, runs a cloth and you squeeze it tightly, get rid of the debris. As I say, I never used to enjoy them, but I do now. Often the postures you don't enjoy are the ones you have to do a little bit more practicing. So you're inhaling as you're taking a breath up the spine, elongating, exhaling as you soften and twist. Don't do what I've just done, which is drop my chin. Keep your chin parallel. And this is the thing, if you lose awareness, and your concentration's not on the job, then it becomes a bit sloppy. And it happened to us all. To come out, you release the chin. Turn around, release the arm. And then we'll go straight into the twist at the opposite side, around to the right. So again, you can just take your left arm around like this, which is a strong twist. But I prefer to hook my elbow around, which pulls on the right hip. And you get an added stretch. Of course, one side is always easier than the other. These require a little bit more effort, a little bit more um, concentration. I don't feel a natural smile coming on at the moment. But with time, as always, you'll be able to deepen your practice. And then things begin to happen. To come out, but release the chin. Release the arm. Turn around. Always slowly. Let go of the leg. And separate, separate the legs. We're going to do dynamic spinal twist, if I remember right. Yes. So again, this one's quite strenuous. So don't go, don't be a hero with the first stretch. So we're going to inhale as we raise the arms out sideways, and then we're going to take the left arm around and touch the right leg, anywhere on the leg. So I can go back a bit. So it's this inhale, exhale to the right, and then you just go to whichever point. It can be the knee, it can be the shin, wherever feels natural, and you turn around and look. This is very strong, so don't be too aggressive. Three breaths. 
Of course, if you bend the spine, you'll get further down, but just go to the first point of resistance because it's strong in the intercostals, it's strong in the shoulders, it's strong in the thighs, it's strong in the neck. Three breaths, when you inhale, stretch out. Again, you can lower the arms, have a break and go back into it. But we'll go across to the left. And of course, this side is much tighter for me, so I can barely get lower than the knee. Of course, if I bend down and bend the spine, of course, I can get further down, but this is not what we want. With time, the body will release. These are, these are strong stretches. You can feel what's happening to the thighs as well. Inhale. So we'll lower, we'll lower down, lower the arms down, place them on the knees. Take a few comfort breaths. If you're tired, lean back a bit, take the support on the hands. Lean back, you can elongate to keep it back straight. If you slouch, it's pointless. If you bring the shoulders forward, it's pointless. Don't be afraid to stop and have a few breaks. You're not being defeated, you're being sensible. And then when you're ready, you re-engage. So we inhale, stretch out the fingers, exhale around to the right, and miraculously, I've gone an extra third down my shin. It takes six seconds for muscles, tendons, ligaments to start to help you. So two, three, four breaths, whatever works for you. Inhale as you come out. Stretch through the fingers. Exhale to the other side. So you basically just continue at your own pace. Take the, take the break if you need it. Keep the chin parallel. There's a lot happening here. You can feel it. Thighs, lower back intercostals, arms, shoulders, neck, occiput, dynamic spinal twist. Of course, you can do this rapidly, but I prefer the slow approach. And if you don't feel that you need, so now I'm down at my ankle, just by taking the breath, just by allowing the body to release naturally. Because I cycle and swim most days, it's up a steep hill and I swim for a long time, I'm always shortening the muscles. So it's like I'm always going back to the starting position, but of course it's not true. And of course with time, you will get down to touch the toes. And then we'll just come up into Vajrasana and have a wee break before we do the camel. So sit back in our ankles. This is a good posture if you have any abdominal problems. This is a good meditative posture. You can stick a cushion under your feet. You can stick a cushion between your seat and your ankles. Vajrasana. Just allow the body to breathe naturally. Keep the spine straight. Keep the chin up. And you can place the left hand on top of the right, if you wish, and touch, touch the thumbs. A mudra. A mudra is just a position you put your body in. Usually it's the fingers, which changes the, the um, electrical current within the body. If you think of other mudras, a simple one is sitting with the thumb and the first finger with the palms open, you're invited energy into the body. Conversely, if it's at night time and you're wanting to calm down, you turn the 
hands, palms in, so it keeps the energy within the body. Left hand on top of right, thumbs touching. And just soften. Mm, now I feel like spine. I've been on meditation retreats where you sit for one hour without moving anything. Let peace begin with me. Let me begin with peace. Of course, if you can't sit down on your ankles, you sit in a chair, you find a comfortable sitting position. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Immersing myself in this present moment, I know it's a beautiful moment. Ultimately, this is all we have, this moment. If you're not living in this moment, you're missing your life. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna come up and do the camel. What, we, what we've been doing this, this last few weeks is the half camel. So as we come up, the camel. So the half camel is when you um, put one hand back, the right hand back onto the right um, ankle, or the right hand back onto the left angle. So remember before I've said, um, if you tuck your toes under, you can check it, you can easily touch the right hand onto the right ankle, or check if you can touch the right hand onto the left. So before we start, if, if you take the toes out, because it's a significant difference, see, you can still touch comfortably, or you can still touch the other side. But of course, it's not getting into the postures, it's getting out. So the half camel is, is when you go back with one hand, right to right, or right to left. The full camel is when you go back with both, both hands, so check if you can actually, with the toes tucked under, just out of interest, check if you can go back and get anywhere near touching. But you can feel already what's happening with the thighs, the gluteals. This is why we've worked on these muscles. So what we'll do is we'll keep the toes tucked underneath. We're going to inhale, spread out the arm, arms, and we'll just come back, right hand on the right ankle. When you look up, you can have the hand straight out, straight out like so, towards the finger, or you can have the arm stretched up. You're trying to keep the hips square as you inhale, stretch up, and relax back. You're not putting all the weight on the heels. The muscles are protecting. You're not slumping down onto the heels. Inhale up, and soften back. To come out, remember I always say you contract the thighs and the gluteals, and that gives you the support to go up and down. See, it's not about pushing out. It's very strong, these. Inhale as you come up. Exhale down. So now we're going to go left to left. I know this may seem very easy for some of you, but it's important to warm up the muscles. Inhale, exhale back, left to left. Inhale, really stretch up. 
so we've, if you think of the muscles we're using, we've used them all for this posture. We've warmed up them all. Three breaths. And then just check, you've tightened the thighs, the gluteals, and then look, you've got the security, you can come up. Exhale down. If you want to try the right hand to the left foot, the left heel, check you can reach it, no problem, before you release all the muscles. And we inhale, exhale around, and we're there. Make sure you find a heel, it doesn't matter. Even if it's someone else's, find a heel. It's important, you're in trouble if you don't find a heel. So inhale, stretch up and soften. Come out, get that contraction. Down you go. Then left hand to right heel. Excuse me, my belt is coming down. And all the excitement. And heel. Around you go. There we go. As always, you can stop the video, have a wee look, get comfortable with what you're about to do. And then continue the practice. This is half camel. And here as you come up. Exhale down. So you can see the way that we're going. You then release the toes and you then do the same. Right hand to right heel, left hand to left heel. If you're confident, because it's a significant difference, if you're confident that then you can go, then it's left, right hand to left heel. So why don't we try with the toes flat, inhale, stretch out the hands. If you're comfortable, you think you can get down, right hand to right heel. It's significantly bigger movement. And relax, inhale, stretch up. As I say, it's never getting in because it's easy to lower the body back. It's taking it back up. So you contract the thighs, contract the gluteals, and that gives you the lift up. And then you come up and it's strong in the lower back as well. So we'll do one, one more left hand to left heel. And then as you progress and practice on your own, you can cross over to the opposite heel. And then ultimately you're going back with both hands onto both heels. I have to be very careful with this one myself because of my lower back. Contract and up you come. So I don't expect you to do this. I will just show you the, um, with the toes flat, I will just quickly go right hand to left heel and show you it's back and it's a way back down here and then you're in this position. As I say, I'll quickly show this, inhale as I come up, back down the other side, so I know exactly what's happening from years of practice. And then ultimately, I will show you this, but I don't want you to practice it. Ultimately, you're going back into the full camel and this is where you need the strength in the thighs 
and the gluteals because you're pivoting on this. If you don't have this, you will pull the muscles. So this is why you don't, you don't do this today. But you come back, you have a look, they're there, and then you're into this. You can do that, or you can do this. But as I say, it's not going into it because I'm supported now, but to come out, I have to lift all the weight of my torso up from this position. So it's the thighs and the gluteals contract, and then you come up. Look, this is all the power. And you can see how much energy that's taken because I'm out of breath. So this is why you continue with your toes tucked in, continue to practice, and you build up the muscles, and then in your own time, there'll come a time when you'll naturally want to go a bit deeper. But it's not for today. Okay, we're up into Vedic salutation. And it's not often I get out of breath, but that shows you the effort to get in there and to come out. It uses vast amount of energy. And I haven't done that for a while myself. So we're going to do a Vedic salutation. One of my favorite movements, regardless of where you're at, regardless of your mood. In my experience, this always changes it for the better. It's minimal energy required, and there's just something cathartic about this posture. Vedic salutation. And what's after that? Gati Chakrasana. Okay. So with your feet slightly more than hip width apart, toes pointing out. Standing tall, I will come back. We're going to inhale as we open the hands, that's all. Inhale, open the palms. Wait for your pause. Exhale, close. Inhale, open the arms. And again, we've got a slight leaning back. Exhale, namaste. Inhale as we raise up. Exhale, namaste. Inhale, open arms, gently lean back. Exhale, close. Inhale, open palms. Exhale, close. So after that last posture, my body's tingling everywhere. I can feel prana shooting all over the place. So this calms it down. And it's only by doing a slow posture after that one that you can have the awareness to see what's actually happened. Inhale, open palms. Exhale, close. Inhale, open arms. Namaste. I barely feel like moving at all. Because we've built up so much prana with the previous practices and clear the blockages. Inhale, open arms.
Inhale, open up, palm. If I wasn't teaching this, I, I wouldn't be moving. As simple as that. I'd be waiting for the body to want to move naturally. And we'll do the last one without speaking. Oh. Now have a look. What's your mood now? Remember, there's not a right or wrong answer to this. It's just as it is. Just be honest with yourself. And with that awareness and that honesty, you have a chance to heal and a chance to grow. Okay, Chakrasana. So we've done this before as well. Um, yeah, okay. So I have to be careful with the microphone, but we take our left arm and we put it over our right shoulder. And of course, that's rubbish. I can't make it flat because of the microphone. Nothing's happening there. So we take a right hand and look, we'll push that elbow around and we'll place it firmly on the back. Look. Firmly on the back, back, so you're getting a nice stretch through the shoulder. You can have your toes pointing out slightly, or you can have them parallel. It's up to you, because when you twist, obviously if they're parallel, you get a stronger contraction. We take our uh, right arm and place it around the back. We're keeping a chin parallel to the ground. Inhale, I'm going to turn to the right. Go in the same direction as the arm over the shoulder. Turn to the right, to the first point of resistance. We're not turning the chin yet. That's the first point of resistance for me. Then you start to breathe. So as always, as you inhale, you're elongating the spine. Wait for your pause. And then allow, allow the body to release. Inhale, smile. This is a twist I do want to smile in. Exhale, release. And you can feel what's happening to your ankles, your knees, your hips, your lower back, your shoulders, your spine and shoulders. When you feel that... Um, You've got about as far as you're going to get. Then you can turn the chin. So 
just keep that awareness that as you inhale, take a breath from the base of the spine, elongate all the way up, exhale and soften. As always, you can stay in this for as long as you wish. This is a lovely stretch. But when you're ready to come out, you release the chin first. Stay in the stretch, but release the chin. Slowly come round with the torso. And exhalation. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And you release the left arm slowly. I love the sensation of the blood and lymph rushing into the areas. Mm. And lastly, release the arm behind your back. Mm. And it's only with this awareness of what's actually happening now that you can grow into a posture. Stand tall. Hmm. And you know what's coming now? Right arm on the on the shoulder. That's no use. So we take the elbow and push it right up and over. And now we're getting a nice stretch. Left arm around the back. Check that your feet are in the same position that you started, either slightly pointing out or parallel. I prefer parallel. If you get the twist anyway, you might as well get the, the best effort of it. And when you're ready, inhale and exhale around to the left, to the first point of resistance. Remember, it will be different at each side. This is stiffer side for me because I don't look over the shoulder on my bicycle. Whichever work practice you have, you'll find that Something that you do each day is repetitive to one side. Then you start to breathe, inhale, elongate. Exhale, relax. And when you really feel there's no more twist to be had, then you turn your chin to the left, obviously. Important that you go with the lift as you're inhaling. See the breath coming up from the tailbone. And you can feel what's happening with the ankles with the knees, with the hips, or I certainly can. Let peace begin with me. Let me begin with peace. And you can't see it, but I'm smiling. Because this feels delicious. To come out, you release the chin on an exhalation. Turn the torso back to forward facing, slowly.
release the right arm slowly. Mm. Release the left. Stand tall with your eyes closed. You can adjust your feet if you wish. Just allow yourself to be. Hmm. I'm always running over, so oh, running over today. Okay, we will finish with one more posture. Gee, that went quickly. I'll miss out of that. Touching the opposite toe. So believe it or not, all these postures were for this one. So we're slightly more than hip width apart. I'm gonna inhale. First point of resistance, nothing strenuous, because we've done a lot of stretching. Exhale down with your left hand and touch the first point on your right leg, around and up. The first point that feels you're getting a bit of resistance. Take a couple of breaths, look up towards your right hand. Inhale as you come up. Stretch through to the fingertips. And yes, you've guessed it. Exhale down with your right hand to the first point on your left leg. Around and look up to your left arm. You don't have to lock the knees. If you want to lock the knees, then it's a very strong stretch in the hamstrings and behind the knees. With time, you can do that if you wish. Inhale as we come up. You can do this dynamically as well, of course. Exhale down. Stay your own time, inhale up. And last one, exhale down. Inhale up, stretch through the fingertips. Exhale down. And they'll barely want to come down. And then we'll just finish in Vajrasana, which is sitting on our heels. Close your eyes. And this is a lot of twisting we've done. This, these are a lot of, this is a lot of postures today. So just come down into Vajrasana. And have a wee look. Left hand on top of right with the thumbs touching. It basically keeps the energy circulation circulating within. Back straight, relax the shoulders. Smile. And how's your mood now? Because as I said earlier, with awareness, you can build up your own personal practice. 
encourage healing energies within the body. As your confidence grows and your practice grows, so will you. But it only ever comes from the awareness of what's happening now. As always, to finish with the quote, I'll pick up this. I know this one, but I just want to get the words exactly right because it's from the Buddha. And he says, be where you are. Otherwise, you will miss your life. Be where you are. Otherwise, you will miss your life. As always, namaste with much love.